All right, so we hit the go live button. It says we're live. And this is the second time this has happened to us. Are we live? Are we live? Guys, let us know. Throw down in the comments if we are live. Oh, well, yeah. Because I think it's official. We got the thumbs up. Definitely. Over we got here the Black Tuna team. From thumbs the producers. up, dude. Heck yes. Carlitos, bro. CD420 hey. in the house. Dakota, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. For those of you just tuning in, we are in CB420's backyard. We're in Black Tuna's fucking we're, stomping grounds we're over here, here bro. We're here in Taganga, which is one of the most important bays um, in in the Caribbean uh, coast of Colombia, right? I think uh, here, it's part of Santa Marta, obviously, but over here it's a different... Um, bay it's a different region yes so definitely it's a pleasure to be with you here in the 420 golden cup uh finally in our backyard our backyard is is full of water heck yeah uh, dude amazing we got this beautiful background behind yeah. us later we're gonna be switching the set around we're gonna be doing lives throughout the entire day today the entire day tomorrow we finally got it figured out guys we had internet problems you know, the universe was trying to work against us. It could have been YouTube or a secret agency, but you know what? We figured it out, bro. I and think we're it's here. a secret agency. <laughs> I think so too, man. Could be a competing cup for all we know. Um, but here we are, bro. It's such an honor. And I want to dive deep on what most of us from the first and the second live that just blew our fucking minds away. And it was like the history, and especially the history of this location, the history of some of the strains. And I know just, you know, a half hour ago, an hour ago, you were upstairs giving a conference and, and really laying down some crazy information. So as always, it would be an honor, bro, to get some of your wisdom, and, and especially about the history here. Of course. We're in the land of, uh, we're actually the best cannabis, you know, in the, uh, ends of the 70s 79 beginning of the 80s before the whole you know pablo escobar era and before we really got our image tainted um, right we were the biggest producers of organic cannabis in the world right the we would biggest actually in the world in the bro. world in the world i'm talking Someone about told me tons. a number of, of the tons that were going out here per week or was it per day do you have a rough uh, the, it's very hard to get a like you could get a rough estimate, but right. I mean, but it was tons of going out. Tons, here definitely on a week. tons. And if if you think about wow. the the area where they were growing, you know, they were growing from uh, where the Cienaga, which is like the Colombian Everglades, right? We were talking about that the other day right. when you were driving, I think, from Barranquilla. Uh huh. Yeah, when you were driving from Barranquilla to Santa Marta, yeah, you definitely get to go through the Colombian Everglades. And, and that's definitely like one of the regions where, where all the moisture is. But the second the Cienaga meets La Sierra, it, it forms a microclimate, right? And mm -hmm. this microclimate goes all the way into La Guajira, which is definitely the driest uh, regions that we have close by. And La Guajira starts next door in Palomino, which is right now it's an hour away from we where we are. We might be checking that out, by the way, guys. Quick little sign up. We might be taking a detour because we did come in a car. We're definitely taking a detour, and we'll get into that in a sec. We're going to be doing a collab here in a few days, guys, and we're going to get to see it in a full-blown episode, and we might head up to, to Palomino as well. It, this whole area is new to me, bro, and it just seems so interesting seeing your work, seeing what you're doing, and now actually being here and experiencing these things. You're talking about the microclimate, how it works, what you're explaining to me with the wind, the rain season, everything. It's it's totally different, definitely, than where my grow is based out of, for sure. And now uh, the viewers could get a, you know, a little you know preview because in my house when i'm there i'm in my bedroom and you can't see anything but now that you're here and you have all this amazing uh production equipment people are going to get to see that this is like you know california but here in in colombia right because yes. even the people that come from humboldt like uncle john who's here from um, cutting edge solutions mm -hmm. uh they all you know they fall in love with the area because it, it resembles the lands where they come from right yeah which is uh you know areas that have a lot of microclimates they they're mount they have mountains uh it, it's very you know dry in some areas the sun is very very you know uh strong so there's a lot of uh you know, there's there, there's a lot of uh, resin production and terpene production uh, due due to those factors, right? So so mm. it's very amazing because, like we said, uh, Colombian cannabis was the most famous in in the right. late 70s, early 80s, right? And that's because, you know, it's one thing to have a a very small 
grow, you know, and reach a couple hundred people, maybe a thousand people. Mm -hmm. But it's different to feed, you know, a whole country, you know, a, a, a whole, like, like a, a, yeah, it's a whole country and a whole, um, a whole number of people, right? That, that you know, they they need their medicine and they need it at affordable prices right so and not really a whole country but like for during a whole era like you know there's many people and let us know guys throwing down those of you from the era who got the chance to smoke some of that stuff coming from colombia in that era what what year span would you have say um to be able to have smoked some of the stuff coming out here from the bay definitely early 80s late 70s uh, early 80s late if, 70s if you were in florida you definitely had you know cannabis coming in from here because uh, the way the the routes were definitely um, they were through the Caribbean and they were straight through Bahamas, uh, straight through the islands, right, um, and up into the states. So, New York, Florida, uh, New Jersey, Boston mm -hmm. uh, started having Colombian cannabis for real, and then it started coming down and everything. <laughs> wow. um, but definitely, if you lived in the states uh, in, in the eighties. Um, in the late seventies, you definitely smoked some sativas coming from from these mountains, from these mountains where you're at right now, and that's the most amazing part because the cannabis here, due to the factors, due to the climate, called uh, Santa Marta and Colombian gold because when you did it, like when the people here grew it, right, um, they had different ways of uh what's it called uh drying right because you didn't have dry houses <laughs> right for you know for a thousand hectares for two thousand hectares you know to, to dry two tons of cannabis it's very difficult <laughs> oh so God, what bro. they did is they cut off you know um when the flowering was was over when it was the mature flowers uh they would cut off the water from the plant you know and, and the flowers would dry no shit. Uh, right on the stock. No you know? way. So bro. <laughs> it's just like if you leave a nug, one of your amazing nugs, which by the way, uh, I heard a lot about this, Mr. Big Runs, but I actually got to taste it now. And yes, and I know why you love it because definitely the terpene profile is uh, very gelato. Mm -hmm. So it, it does, you know, make a lot of sense with its genetic background. Right. And and it, it, it's amazing. And if you would leave that Big Runs one day here in the Santa Marta climate, it would lose its beautiful green tone uh -huh. right, and it's orange hairs and it would become the first day will probably be orange right, uh, right. And the second day it will be like um, kind of brown right so wow. so that's here. why Colombian gold was called Colombian gold is because before the the flowers turn to those Shit. ugly colors yeah um, it would actually be yellowish yellowish gold which is the transition from that green color right when it's drying in the heat and in the sun so that's why those hues would come uh and that's why it was called colombian gold and santa marta gold I'm trying to pull and up a picture here bro a quick little reference and i so think we can uh yeah exactly i think that story has to be told correctly because you know there's a lot of lies behind it uh and people use the name a lot you know because it's good it's marketing and mm -hmm. uh you know colombian especially after mac got famous and everybody heard that he used the Colombian phenotype or something right but definitely like our, our strains over here like I said it, it's the ground right like everybody mm -hmm. loves fruit terps you know so you definitely have to grow cannabis for a long time in areas yeah. where fruits grow right and and that happened here pretty much without control so that's why you have a lot of phenotypes that that could pull it off so what type of um and just a sidetrack for us like being here at the at the 420 golden cup and what where are these flowers coming from? I know there was, you know, quite a few submissions coming in for the cup as well. Are a lot of these growers local to this area? Are these growers from all around Colombia? Um, and then secondly, what what do you see the level at so yeah. far? Uh, well, well, here, to tell you the truth, I think uh, you and me have the most entries, but that's just a speculation because, you know, you have three and I have four. Right. Um you're from La Ceja, Antioquia, and I'm from Santa Marta, so I'm definitely like, I believe I'm one of the few natives that, that's in this really? cup, you know. Yeah, awesome. because Santa Marta has always been a, a marimbero, you know, a region. Mm -hmm. But the culture of, you know, growing your own cannabis is, is, is just starting, right? Yeah. And, and I come from, you know, I, I come from the States, I come from Puerto Rico, I come from the capital. 
So, so I've been, I definitely, you know, when, when cannabis got legal, I came to Santa Marta, but definitely Santa Marta lost its touch with its cannabis roots, you know, mm-hmm. since the 80s. And because it definitely got, you know, the hammer, right? Since we produced it here, people got the hammer here, people went to jail here, people got, you know, extradited. Uh, so definitely it turned into something that was, it, it was definitely like, you know, people didn't want to do it anymore. Right. So the people who started doing it um, started being in other regions of Colombia. I think that's a term for sure we, we should clarify and I want to talk about because some, marimberos, right? And that's something I never heard of like uh, before I came here and started to study or at least until I started to see the history of, of everything. And I feel like a lot of people on here might not know the history as well. So where does that come from, um, that word, basically? Marimberos comes from the word marimba, right? Marimba is A, an instrument, right? A musical instrument, which is like a percussion. And B, they used to call cannabis here marimba. Mm -hmm. So the people who used to work with marimba and grow marimba were referenced as marimberos yeah so it it was definitely a a phrase and a word that was mostly used here in the coast but now a marimbero is basically anybody who works with cannabis right oh, oh there the goes light. the light quick yeah hey, there goes the light and there goes our light guys this cup and is there goes the light it all, everything happens for a reason. We're chilling out. The wind's kicking in, but I'm still having a good fucking time. And Let's this do this, bro. this is one of the reasons why cannabis grows amazing here. <laughs> the wind. Yeah, the wind. The of wind course, because it, beautiful. If it didn't have wind, you would have 60% humidity. There we go. With the wind factor, it drops to 45, 50. So while we get this fixed here, guys, I'm going to throw you a quick commercial and show you guys exactly what it's like here behind the scenes at the Cup today. I filmed this just a few minutes before the interview. Yeah. Check it out. The 420 Golden Cup here in Taganga, Colombia, guys. All right, guys, so we're on a commercial break really quick, and I want to show you behind the scenes of the cup. Check this out. So when you walk in, you obviously got this amazing view. Pool downstairs, by the way, guys. Infinity pool downstairs. If you get a little too hot, a little too high, go ahead and check out the view. And then upstairs on the second level, we got ourselves some amazing brands, obviously. With Carlos on the live right now, we got Black Tuna. Next on the lives is coming up right here, and we got Cutting Edge Solutions. John is going to be hopping out in the live in just a little bit, and there he is. You're coming out on the live in a bit, brother? (laughs) We're on a commercial break right now on the live, so I'm just showing everyone who we got next on the live. Coming soon with Cutting Edge. Check out the rest here. Como están, buenas? What's up, guys? What's up, family? How we doing? What is up? Here we got the Smoke Shop Delight. Everything you need is here. Beautiful at the Marijuana. 420 shop based out of Medellin, guys. Amazing. We got some dope clothing here with my homeboy. What's up, dude? Hey, people. Todo bien? Hell yes, bro. Estamos en un comercial para el en vivo mostrando como es la copa. Look, look at this guy, this sick fucking hemp bro, treated hemp fucking shoes boys, hey, la buena, gracias brother, here we got Punto Rojo guys, as you can see my shirt in the live, rocking Punto Rojo in the house, amazing huh, que tal? Hey, estamos en comercial en este momento en el en vivo, entonces saludas, hey? Yeah, boys. Duro. Hell yes. And then over here, guys, we got the smoke session. We lounge in, hey, Pablo? Torrojo. Got Lucky OG in the house over here. Oh, look at that. Who's that little girl? Oh, my goodness. Hola, mamacita. Hey, ¿qué más, brother? Bien? Check this out, guys. We got some amazing vape cartridges, some fucking top quality shit. We got one at the house, delicious. Chima, bro. And then right now, going on. Hey, estamos en comercial para el en vivo. So check this out, guys. This right here is what I'm getting made. We're getting a necklace made. Not gonna show you till the end, but it's gonna be dope. Here with the crew, guys, blowing some fucking beautiful glass. Glass mafia in the house. We got fucking Tola Heady Plug crew. Rocket boys. 
Donatien, we got our edibles in the house, some fucking hardcore edibles. Señor, ¿cómo estás? Hola, Bien. ¿cómo están? Saludos. Saludos. Wow. Delicious, delicious stuff, guys. Well, it's time to get back to the live. There's a little behind the scenes, Santi. We're getting back to the live. Please, please. So, um, yeah, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, there's a little behind the scenes view of what it's like here at the 420 Golden Cup. I just took them around, showed them a few of the booths, showed them what's going on, the infinity pool, which I still haven't hit infinity yet. Infinity pool. What do you think so far of the event, bro? We've been to many events together. Yes. What do you rate and what do you think so far yes, of here at the Ganga? At the 420 Golden Cup? Well, I'm going to be honest. Uh, definitely the best weather. Um, definitely, you know, <laughs> we were at the beach yesterday with the stands. There was space. Um, so definitely, you know, what? some of the best accommodations and weather we've seen all year. Uh, even though when you guys got here, it poured, you know, and <laughs> it got super humid and it was bad for the samples. But otherwise, it's been great, I think. Uh, I think the factor of the the location right and the culture that there is in Santa Marta uh, is not that advanced right like in Bogota or Antioquia or you know those right. big cities that have been you know marching it's, and that have been preaching and activism you it's know, a and, chill vibe here bro smoke it's such a chill vibe dude you go down I, when I first got here and I was checking in my hotel yeah. it was like 8 a.m. bro and I rang the bell and buddy literally came out and he was scratching his eyes he was out, came out of his hammock and he's like huh yeah, yeah, come back in an hour and, and we'll check in. And I was like, okay, cool, dude. Amazing, chill, beach vibe. Almost like an island vibe in a kind of way. There's no place to be. Like, there's no rush in that kind of sense. Definitely, yeah. Like, uh, Miami, Jamaica, Puerto Rico. Um, Caribbean island vibe, you know. That's why they, they call, you know, costeños, which is people who live in the coast, lazy. And I think it's just we go at a, a different rhythm. Um, and definitely, you know... Coastal cities definitely are very cannabis friendly. If you notice, mm -hmm. you know, uh, California has a big surfer scene, a big, uh, Good point, yeah. you know, BC, organic. Canada, for exactly, example. it's all very coastal. It's all very close to nature, right? So I think as you get into the city, people get more stressed out, um, and people get a little bit more hyped up. And yeah, cannabis is a part of life, but definitely not. Uh, it's it's not the mood right over here mm -hmm. in, in the coast in the beach it's very cannabis mood right? yeah bro. And, and even people who don't smoke uh they get into the vibe you know especially here um, <laughs> totally, people here bro. pretty much they get like my girl for example bro she <laughs> she, was, she was telling him earlier he's like oh, i'm like best. three weeks in a smoking now and she's like almost taking three dabs weeks. at that point you know she's hitting little doobies hitting everyone's vape pen it, the vibe here you know there's mushrooms flying around bro it's just a really cool laid back <laughs> You know, amazing live. cup in, in my experience, bro. And, and for those of you tuning in, welcome to the live, guys. We got ourselves, you know, our guest of honor here. We're in his turf. <laughs> We're here with CB420, guys. Thank We're you. kicking it back. And during the whole cup, after this, we'll probably shut down for 20 minutes. Mocha Doobie, and we'll be back on with someone else. We're going to be nonstop today and tomorrow here at the 420 Golden Cup. So if you are tuning in, pay attention because it's going to be nonstop, guys. From here, something I would really love to talk about. In the next few days, we're going to go and take a tour aren't we yes we're gonna go take a tour um and see some facilities you know see some plants um we have the the um, honor of working you know with some of the best companies here with uh canadian biopharmaceuticals um and a we've big operations we, going guys. yeah we've created some nice stuff uh in the last few years so, Hell yeah, so it's it's gonna be interesting what we get to see. We're definitely not in in the, you know, we're not in the big growing season, but we're definitely like doing stuff that you don't see every day. So we mm -hmm. have a couple of hundred, you know, couple actually like yeah, like two thousand plants outdoors, <laughs> um, with stable genetics, you know, that we've been running in this region for for quite some time now. It's gonna now. be amazing, and dude. and that's pretty much what what we bring to the table now right i mean mm -hmm. the the industry has two two faces you know it has a medical industrial side and it has a, a recreational uh, adult use side that that's very fast and very uh you know it, it changes it moves fast uh, and, and the pharmaceutical and medicinal move slow at a different pace 
So, mm-hmm. so what you're gonna see, you know, is it's it's the both worlds, right? People who've been working in in the in the recreational adult use side, but that are now, you know, breeding and and stabilizing genetics for for pharmaceutical uh, reasons, right? So I think that that transition and that synergy be, between both worlds is is what really gets you know things going because uh, you've heard a lot about um, the investments mm-hmm. and, and all the people that big work time. with uh, big uh, corporates that they don't really do well after a couple of months or yeah. after a year or two because people actually you know they see through them or, or they actually don't have the ability to to know the culture to know the market and and they burn themselves out really quickly right so I think that the future of, of these big corporate companies is is to do what the companies here are doing right and they're mm-hmm. legible people that are going to be behind the projects and and the and the results that they want to acquire right so right. i think it's very important you're going to see that right i think uh it, and and black tuna is also that right it's it's backed by science it's backed by results guess, and dude. and that's something that you know the recreational world especially in south america is just beginning to to witness and to enjoy that's amazing bro i cannot wait guys we're gonna be going together you guys are gonna be coming with me as we go through we check it out i've never seen more than 40 fucking plants in my life bro right me, me neither up to five years ago I <laughs> dude i cannot wait it's gonna be made uh f- from mango lemonade which is limonada de mango um and uh fresas con crema Right. Right. So limonada de mango, which, by the way, I was very proud to see a lot of uh, Colombian growers, you know, they brought to the stand today a mm-hmm. couple of uh, black tuna flowers. Bro, a bunch are yeah, floating around it's here. It's crazy. unbelievable, and, man. And a it, lot of growers yeah. are rocking it here, it, man. It's crazy because you know that that we bred for. Right. And, and today I saw one and I was very happy because it, it had the amnesia haze. Uh, definitely turf profile and and uh, it was dominant right and and that's right. what we try to work with you know we try to really get what we say we have um, and definitely Musa Limon is is the the second step after that right so after we prove uh, proof of concept right and, uh, and the breeding yeah we can take them to future generations right a lot of uh, companies they like to mix and match a lot but I I think it's very important that when breeders uh, and companies have something that's good, they continue to work with it, right? And continue to take it down the line. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that, that was done with Mousse de Limon uh, because it, it's one of the first crosses with two existing uh, cultivars from Black Tuna. Right. Amazing, bro. I'm excited for this. And as you know, gonna I'm gonna take my time because I got a bunch that I'm working my way through right now. Right? You have a lot of work. I got the full. I got a lot of work ahead of me, yeah. bro. A lot of seed to harvest are gonna be coming out with a Black lot. Tuna in the near future. The first one is going to be Raspau. Then from there, we're working our way through one by one. I'm almost tempted to squeeze this sucker in before we get through all the native line, but I want to stick true to my actual career. That sucker is yours. You're taking it. Oh, <laughs> you got it, brother. It. Heck yes. A little smoke break here, guys. That is a this. slaps. Moose Moon, now there's no excuse at all. This sucker is getting popped. My it's goodness, getting bro. Popped. Thanks, dude. Uh, by the way, with that native line, you got to do very few days of veg. Okay. If not, you're going to have a big problem. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm two weeks in, like I'm 14 days just past that right now in veg. Flip them. Really? Yeah, flip Okay, so now. they're getting put into a 2 by 4 how then. How big are they? Um, like this? Yeah, no, a little bit less because I've been hitting them hard with the light, nice and low, so they're about there. Yeah, they're uh, nice when, and stout. When it gets, yeah, when it gets maybe like five more days, Okay. 20 days, flip them. So you as soon as I get back home, we'll take a look, yeah. and it looks like we're flipping those first out of anything else then that I got going. Because the flowering times on those, remember, it's... It, it, you know you have a pure sativa line so you're gonna have plants that are 70 days plus right and when i mean 70 days plus i mean um right. 70 days plus it ain't no joke so right and, and it's a different feeding schedule you know I, I need you to to increase for example your 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 parts per million depending on how you measure yeah um and i need you to hit them hard okay uh until the very end and especially with with the pk right um got gotcha. you very important because they don't have the same 
characteristics as as afghanicas right so they're yeah. not they're not gonna grow golf ball dense flowers mm -hmm. you're gonna have to work on the terpene production right so you're gonna want to use a uh, melasas would be sugars right? yep okay got you because as plant you sugar sugar cane and um, she's gonna love that she's gonna love that because okay. she produces you know it enhances her her profile you know it's not gonna it's not gonna uh provoke the way she tastes it's just gonna produce more terpenes right gotcha. and even more uh trichomes uh -huh. because uh sugars pretty much translate to trichome and terpene production or like that sugary for example i've seen from calling that thing bro which as you know right now i'm running mills and it's unbelievable the results i've been getting so far turns out i'm gonna switch over to a new cycle because it's all about testing here at homegrown tv and showing the people what it is that each product does so i'm switching my whole garden over on the next cycle um, to cutting edge and we're gonna be testing that so I'm gonna have to uh, be hitting up with some feedback and questions as far as what you recommend if you say she's a heavy feeder I'm gonna feed like follow their feed schedule but push her like on the high side huh all right man definitely on the high the side chef himself guys um, they're you know they're big productive plants you know they're resistant they're made for outdoors in reality you know mm -hmm. because the Colombian uh, the pink Colombian that's in the cross which is dominant okay um you know she's from the mountains you know mm -hmm. she's she survived on her own and and she's strong so she brings to the table all the you know the resistance and the production uh so definitely the native line is, is met the terpene profiles right to know what real colombian lines taste like right and to know the the first f1 hybrids that come out when you when you really mix right and i think your viewers are gonna like that because uh, till now, um, you know, in, in the indoors, we usually just grow indicas and hybrids. And w even when they say it's a sativa hybrid, uh, the breeders do their job to bring it down to 60, 70 days, right? And we're talking right. about, you know, 70 plus when we talk about mestizo, mulato, and sambo, you know. Uh, right. And we talk about, yeah, and when we talk about <laughs> the mixes, right, the, the hybrids or the polyhybrids, yeah. Uh, they bring it down, right? Like, for example, Cherry West in uh, in Black Jaguar. Cherry West is a 55 day. Right. But when you mix it with a 100 day plant, you end up with like a 70 day plant, oh, right? Yeah, or or right. a 65 day plant. So, with Raspao, with that also in Raspao there. Raspao is in the mix for 70 days. Yeah. Uh, Salpicon is a little bit like 75 That's because so she's, cool, she's mixed with mermelada. Yeah. Um, definitely marijuana is also a little bit more because she comes from the more sativa selections of, of, of the first uh, run. That's amazing, right. bro. So when I that's a, I've never actually even thought about it this way, but the fact that you're taking, you know, something that flowers so long, crossing with something absolutely short, and taking the best of both worlds after your pheno hunts, that's a whole other aspect. Wow, when you say it that way, bro. Wow, I can't wait to see this in fucking person. This is gonna be amazing, guys. That's the reason why we lost uh, pure sativas, right? Mm -hmm. Because nobody, no, nobody really uh, conserved one. And in the moment that they wanted to, you know, increase production and better the, they obviously had to bring Afghanicas in to shorten the the flowering periods. So that's why today, even if they say it's a pure sativa, it's really, you know, questionable because you know all the hybrids and polyhybrids that were done because you know kind of is not really controlled by any entity that has the you know the tranquility or or, or, or the take movement. a quick second here hold on are we getting uh, mad internet connection issues right now we're good we're flowing all right yeah we're good wow my goodness this is awesome and i've seen a little bit of uh feedback on my end but let us know guys in the comments for me this has been absolutely fire bro and such a fucking honor to hang out with you no, this is no. by no means the last live we're doing while i'm here by the way we're gonna be rocking one tomorrow for sure bro from the balcony yes from the tomorrow's the, the award ceremony correct oh yes yes, tomorrow's yes. The award. so maybe we catch one before maybe we actually throw the award ceremony on live as well we don't know what's gonna happen what we do know is we're gonna continue to have a fucking blast here bro <laughs> rolling the doobies hanging out with great people it's the best. um is there anything you want to say bro i think we 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 take it um, to an end here but any anything last messages that you want to throw down for the people no that um, i'm honored for you to be here in our land bro i want you to feel at home uh, i'm honored for you to always have me uh you know on home grow tv hell yeah bro. um i appreciate the love and the passion you know that, that, that you input into this 